So, after a long interview process, you got the job. Congratulations. Now what? Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what I'm going to do is count down five things that you should do first whenever you start a new system administrator position. The things that I'm going to go over in this video are very important to your first 90 days, which is critical when starting a new position. So the things that I'm going to go over are definitely important. Now, to be fair, there's all kinds of things that you might run into as part of your new position, and I have no way of predicting everything. But the five things I'm going to go over in this video are very common, so I'm sure you'll run into at least a few of these. Anyway, I'm eager to get started, so let's get started with the very first thing that you should do first when you start your brand new system administrator position. And the first thing I'm going to recommend that you do immediately is start keeping track of your accomplishments. As an IT person, you'll accomplish many things, and at some point, if you're not already, you'll start to take some of those things for granted. I mean, in your eyes, it might only take you a few minutes to install this really easy software patch, but that's not something to be taken lightly. By installing that patch, for all you know, you might have protected your company from a security vulnerability that would otherwise give you a bad day. But because you installed that patch, you might take that for granted, and I'm here to tell you not to do that. If your company has a regular review process, what you want to be able to do is come to the table with a list of things that you accomplished. So if you write all these things that you do off is not all that important because maybe a few of those things were really easy, not all that big of a deal, Never take anything you do lightly because you are very important to your company and so is everything that you do for the company. So write down the security patches that you install, the vulnerabilities or CVEs that they protect the company from. Whenever you answer something that's in the news, that's making the rounds, that could be something going on in the industry that might hit your company and you protect your company from that, keep a note of that. You need to make sure your company knows exactly what you do for the company and make sure that they appreciate you. And the best way to do that is to keep a list of your accomplishments so that way you can make sure that everything you do is taken into consideration. The next item on my list is that you should start contributing towards documentation immediately. And the reason why this is on my list is because you're entering this position for the very first time, so you're seeing everything for the very first time. You're going to come up with questions and have some things that you're confused about that someone that's seasoned on the job just won't have. And because of that, Writing documentation is very critical because you're in a perfect position to do it. Later on, you'll be so seasoned at your job, it'll be muscle memory, it'll actually get hard to explain how to do some of the things you'll be doing on the job. But if you document right now, then you'll help the next person that starts a job at that company, and they'll really appreciate that. And your company will appreciate it too, because most of the companies that I've worked with have terrible documentation. And it's not that they set out to have terrible documentation. It's just really hard to find time to manage documentation. It's a big undertaking. But as a new person at your company, documentation is a great place to start anyway because you can read about the company and the things that you'll be doing. And you could also help contribute to the documentation, which helps your company out. They'll really appreciate that. And it also helps out anyone new that's starting the company. It's just a win all the way around. And the third thing is to understand the rules. And this might seem like a very generic thing to say. So let me explain. When you are on the job and you are doing all kinds of cool things, maybe you are patching systems, you're setting up new systems, you're having all kinds of fun. And let's say, for example, you check out a YouTube video. That YouTube video talks to you about how to perform a penetration test. A penetration test helps you find out if there's any security vulnerabilities or problems that the company might face. Now, is that a good idea? Should you do that? Well, maybe not. And here's why. Because you might not be allowed to do that. Doing a penetration test might be against your network rules at your company, and that might result in you being fired. Even though you think you're doing a favor to the company, it might be against the rules. So anytime you're going to do something out of the ordinary like this, you always have to make sure that you have buy-in, that you understand the boundaries, and that you don't cross them. It might even be the case that a network administrator handles penetration testing, and that's not something that they want you to do. If you do it anyway, well, they didn't want you to do it, so don't do it anyway. But if you want to work on a project, certainly offer yourself to that project. Make sure you have something in writing that says you can do something like this, and then go ahead. 
But the thing is, you want to always understand what the rules are, what you can do and what you can't do, so that way your career doesn't end prematurely. For item number four, you should understand the major risks for your company. Now, I don't mean all of the major risks company-wide. I mean, sure, there might be some competition that's coming that might mean your company is going to war with another company over something, but that's not your problem. Your job is to keep the systems running, so that may not be something that you care about. But when it comes to information systems, your servers, your networks, and all of that, you have to understand what the most important things are to your company, so that way you know how to prioritize your time. The last thing that you'll want to experience is to have something go down and it's really important and you have someone at your desk asking you, why didn't you notice this or why didn't you fix this in time? Now, an answer of, I didn't know it was important isn't really a good answer. So what I recommend you do is find out what's more important first so that way if something does happen, you'll know again how to prioritize. It's really important. All in all, you'll want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on all of the things that are the most important to your company and that should help you out a lot. Now for number five, you should audit the backup system. And this is very, very, very important. Now, it could be the case that you are not responsible for backups. In that case, you don't have to worry about this at all. For example, if there's a dedicated backup team or something like that, you can let them handle it. But if you're at all involved when it comes to backups, even if it's just snapshotting things, you should check your backups. Even better, if you have permission to do so, it would be a good idea to audit backups. I don't care if they said during the interview that they have the best, most tested backups in existence. You should never take anyone else's word for that. If you have permission to check the backup server or backup service, you should definitely do that. And the reason why this is on my list is because this is one of the things that go wrong the most often. Sometimes you'll even have another administrator that thinks the backups are perfect and they're anything but. Also, an untested backup is just wishful thinking. I didn't come up with that saying, but it's very popular in the industry and for good reason. And if you don't check this, assuming that the backups are fine and then they're not and the company loses information, that's not going to be a good time. I highly recommend that you audit all the backups. Here's some of the things that you should check. First, if you have permission to do so, restore a file from the backup and make sure that you can read it. If you can't, there could be some corruption there and that might be a big problem. If it's a VM snapshot, see if you can create a new instance of that VM in an isolated network to make sure that you can restore an instance from that snapshot. Also, when I asked you earlier to take note of all the things that are the most important to your company, make sure all of those things are backed up and backed up regularly. And when it comes to patching and backups, those are two things that companies generally don't do well. And I'm not here to insult or talk down when it comes to companies, but we're all human. So when in doubt, just check the backups. And one of the things that this is going to help you do is understand the backup system even before you need to use it. So that way you'll be ahead of the curve. Anyway, that was my list of five things you should do first when you start a new position as a system administrator. I hope you found this content helpful. If you did, please click the like button to let YouTube know that you found my content helpful. Also, feel free to subscribe because I upload new Linux content each and every week. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this list and I hope it helps you out in your career. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video.